<laughs> how many of you have prepared for an emergency? Now, how many of you have prepared for an emergency for you and your pet? Dogs. Cats. Goats. And if you have bees, strap them down. Does your plan involve stuffing the farm animals in the family car? Hmm. Don't fall into the normalcy bias that it can't happen to me because that is what everyone says before a disaster happens to them. We are here to show you how great, some great tips on how to be prepared with your pet for any, any emergency. We are gonna do some first aid, we are gonna do pet emergency kits and what to do in an evacuation for both small animals and large animals. What would happen if there was an evacuation of your area and you weren't nearby? Ask a friend, family member, or neighbor to be your evacuation buddy. You can exchange contact information and take care of each other's pets if someone is away. And exchange house keys. That would be really helpful mm -hmm. if you have a pet indoor, which we're gonna cover in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Making connections is especially true for those of us with large animals. A lot of people with large animals, many of us, don't have the capability to evacuate all of them at once. But if you know someone in your neighborhood that does, please connect with them. I know there was a fire near our house a couple mm -hmm. few years ago, and they were evacuating all of the animals and the horses, and there were people and neighbors from a neighboring town that came with all their horse trailers to help evacuate the animals, but they couldn't get to them because it was a bottleneck at the road. So if you know someone close by that already has a plan and will be there, that is the fastest and best way to take care of your pets. It really was amazing to watch because as everyone was leaving the town, there were so many trucks and horse trailers that were pouring in to save all those horses and animals. It was really great to see. They saw the fire and they knew there was a need and they mm -hmm. stepped up. It was really amazing to yeah. see. The number one best thing you can do to keep track of your pets are using microchips. Please use microchips and update the contact information, update the information, and also put in your buddy contact information on there as well. What we wanna show you is a pet emergency kit. Now this is gonna be for your indoor pet mostly, or a dog or a cat, but we're also gonna show you tips that you need for your larger animals. You're gonna to wanna to have a bag and make sure whatever neighbor contact that you have, make sure they know where this is. It's gonna to wanna to have dog food or food for at least about a week, ideally. You're gonna want lots of water. You're gonna want a collapsible bowl. Now, mine is more like for a person, it's really tall and skinny, but you're gonna want a whiter one for your dog. You can find those in the pet supplies, even at Walmart. Yep. I love those. Uh, have some basic first aid if need be. Chances are it's pretty likely you might need something. That's why you're gonna want some vet wrap. This is a regular wrap you can find at, at any grocery store or Walmart or anything, and that, that will help immensely. So you'll want the square gauze and the rolled gauze, along with an antiseptic like betadine, and hand sanitizer, and disposable gloves. Yep. Keep your pet's medical records in there. Uh, you're probably going to need things like vaccination records or rabies shots if they don't have a tag on their collar. And we're going to go over collars in a second. So if you had to evacuate and you had to go to a animal shelter and leave your pets there or a boarding facility, they mm -hmm. usually require those vaccination records. So that's pretty yeah. good. So number one, make sure that those records are up to date. Make sure your pets are vaccinated and ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> and then make sure you keep those records and keep them in an easy to grab place. And best place is in your pet emergency bag. Contact identification cards like these are amazing. Not only should you put your contact information, but as well as your vet, your out of business hours vet, so the emergency clinic, as well as out of the area veterinary clinics. Also, out of the area shelters, boarding facilities are all awesome information to have. So these are cool, and you can even get pet safety apps now. This is the American Red Cross for your dogs and cats. It's so cool. It has, you can learn about it, prepare emergencies. They quiz you on what, what they teach about uh, pet first aid, CPR, what to look for, choking, um, fainting, all of these things are amazing and you can keep track of your pets. 
There's also health apps for equine, for horses and other animals. You can keep track of their health as well as get them the care that they need in an emergency situation. So they are really, really cool. They even have a drowning, CPR, electric shock, eye emergencies, falling, frostbite, heart emergencies, heat related, hypothermia, poisoning, seizures, shock, uh, slipped get disc, smoke inhalation really really cool and you can just switch whether you you're looking for your dog or your cat so please get one of these apps on your phone it's awesome also learn how to recognize if your dog is choking and how to perform the heimlich we put an awesome video link down below of a vet demonstrating that which is really cool so we highly recommend you watch this video and learn how to prevent your dog from choking at the first sign of an emergency bring your small pets indoors animals can oftentimes sense danger and you don't want them running away or trying to hide so yeah. bring them in if you are forced to leave your pets behind in, in the event of an evacuation know the dangers of leaving collars or harnesses or halters on your animals a lot of times it's not uncommon for them to get caught in a fence or snagged on something and they cannot get away that is seriously dangerous for them it's not uncommon for a horse to get his foot or shoe stuck in a halter just from scratching his face which can cause serious injuries and especially if there's not medical help nearby. Yeah. So one of the rem remedies for that, for at least first off for horses, is on our property, we braid these ID tags into their mane and we keep our contact information on it. So on one of these, these are regular livestock ear tags that mm -hmm. we take and through the loop, we thread some twine and we write down our contact information, name, phone number, address, whatever, whatever's needed. And we put the twine through it and then we braid it into their mane. So these are pretty bright, pretty big. People can usually find them and see them and they can bring the horses home or at least contact us. Yeah, so. you can braid it in the tail too. Yep. It really works. In the tail. And if you have cattle, you can put it in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> and I might duct tape one of these onto my goat's horns because I'm pretty sure that would stay on pretty good. Yeah. So also, if you ever have to leave your pets behind in an emergency, these are a really great sign that you can leave by your front door, front window, preferably the full eight by 10, mm -hmm. but it clearly says that you have so many dogs, so many cats, please rescue them and your emergency contact information. So that lets emergency personnel know that you have pets in the house that need rescuing and it's very, very clear and easy for them to understand. There are some times where we really do have to leave our pets behind and there are lots of different reasons for that, but you wanna do, do you wanna bring them inside, put them in a safe place, Mm -hmm. and take this toilet seat off or lift it up ideally take it right off so they have a uh, some fresh water now mm -hmm. the bowl's not going to refill so please put extra water out but leave lots and lots of food you want to have at, at least a week or two or preferably mm -hmm. three yeah you never know how long you're going to be gone leave lots mm -hmm. of food keep them indoors this will help them know that they need to be rescued if you can't get back to them yeah if you can't get back to them or get back to them in time I'm going to show you a basic demonstration for doggy CPR with our very own Hurricane Katrina survivor. He's our rescue dog. As you can imagine, he's very old, but he is very good. He's a very happy dog. So anyway, he's going to demonstrate for us. First thing you want to do is check responsiveness. See if they're responsive. Stomp your feet when you come up. If that doesn't work, try pinching a little webbing between their toes. If that doesn't work, poke them right in the corner of their eye. See if they get a response. The first of the ABCs is airway. So check to make sure that his neck is nice and lined up and check his mouth. See if there's any, anything in there that you can see. If there is, pull it out. If there isn't, make sure you pull their tongue out as far as you can and make sure that there's nothing obstructing his airway up here. Put your head down here by his face. Use your cheek to feel for air as you look down his chest to see his chest rise and fall. If you can't feel anything, then move on to circulation. You can feel that down here in the central pad of the paw. You can also check probably an easier pl place is right here in the inner thigh, the femoral artery. If you don't feel any of that, then go ahead and start with your doggy CPR. You're going to want to interlock your fingers, 
straighten your elbows, put it right above his heart. His heart is going to be, if you took his leg and you pulled it up, his elbow is going to point to his heart. So it's about right there. You're going to want to put it right over the heart and give really good thrust because you want enough pressure to pump blood through the body. Of course, I'm not going to do that on good old Rizzo here because he's not dead. So press, press, press. It's going to be 30 compressions and two breaths. 30 compressions and two breaths. And you're going to want to keep a good fast pace. So there are a few songs that you can sing in your head while you're doing it. One of them is Staying Alive. And the other one, funny enough, is another one but Bites the Dust. So you can take your pick and keep going, keep going with the pattern. 30 compressions, two breaths, and get it to the vet as fast as you can. Hopefully they'll be just fine. As far as breaths go, wrap your mouth around their nose for large breeds, close their mouth, and then inhale. And since your face is down here by their face, you can watch their chest, make sure that it rises just a little bit. You don't want to over inflate their lungs. Good boy. Yeah, you're feeling pretty good, huh? And for smaller dogs, you're going to want to envelop both their mouth, their whole mouth and their nose in your mouth. So that sounds really great, but it's going to save your dog. And here we have a smaller dog example because Rizzo is a nice sized dog. So here, if you have a small dog, you're going to want <clears throat> to face it the same way, cup your hands and you're going to want to press down, um, excuse me, like this here. Palms down, thumbs up, and you're going to want to use your thumbs to press down into your palms and do compressions like that. And if it's a small dog, you're going to want to put the whole mouth, <laughs> whole mouth and nose in your mouth <laughs> and keep going, kind of like a baby, just keep compressions, 32, 32 breaths, and keep going and get that doggy to the vet. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment in the comment section. We want to hear your amazing rescue stories. <laughs> Just like good old Rizzo here. Mm -hmm. And subscribe, please subscribe to the channel because we've got lots more videos and we want to share them with you. Please let us know how it went in preparing your pets for an emergency. Yeah. Dogs like Rizzo here will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you in the next video.